Hello, hello, all of you wonderful people. Hello to you, hello to you. I hope that um, your relationship is still intact in spite of the coronavirus. And so I'm gonna spend some time talking to you and answering somebody's question. The question is, should I cancel my wedding? <sighs> now, most brides don't even want to think about the word cancel because for some of us, that is like the epitome. That is like the best accomplishment ever. It, it says so much about our love. I mean, we want to feel pretty. We want to look beautiful. We want it all. We want the fairy tale. And then all of a sudden, a pandemic happens. That's a hard one. But if you stay with me, I'll offer you some insight. Now, firstly, listen, listen, this goes out to all of the brides. Do not allow anyone to minimize your feelings. You have a right to feel the way you want to feel. That's a hard thing to be faced with the decision of canceling a wedding where some people say this was, this is the wedding of a lifetime. You know, we pump it up, we pump it up. So now you have these expectations and then you have something out of your control. And so therefore now you're disappointed. Mm. It's okay. All right. You're not alone. In fact, there is, let's see, according to Wedding Industry Professionals Association, I didn't even know they had a Wedding Industry Professional Association. There will be, or usually every year, 2.2 million weddings every year. Can you imagine that? I didn't know that many people was getting married, but then 50% of marriages end in divorce. So I'm not raining on your parade, but I do say this. I have to agree with this one person I heard. He said, you need to focus more on your marriage versus your wedding day. I can testify to that. Amen to that. Amen to that. I got a husband. He was my husband. So let's move on. So the question becomes, should you cancel your wedding? Well, this is a personal decision. You do know that, right? This is a very personal decision. You get to decide. Is it the best thing for you two to do? Because this is your marriage. This is your wedding. This is your marriage. This is your wedding. Come together with your boo, your honey, what have you, and sit down and really have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And men, please be gentle. And mothers and those of you that have been married for a long time, let the person have their moment. Okay, what happened for you 50 years ago is 50 years ago. I know that you're trying to help and you want to help the bride put things in perspective. But the reality is each bride feels completely different. And in fact, the average wedding for 2020 is over $24,000. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. So you got the cost. You have the inconvenience. You have the emotional pull on you. You have uh, the bridesmaids and the grooms and all of those people, the whole wedding party who has invested money into this. But here's the thing. When people love you, they're going to be flexible because they want you to be happy. They want what's best for you. So if you think about the people who really, really love you and they know that you didn't cause the coronavirus, you didn't cause this, they're going to support you. And it doesn't mean, you know, I remember thinking, I don't want a wedding when it's raining, you know, because we thought if it's raining, that means God's not pleased. I mean, people pick up all kinds of things, but that doesn't mean that that um, that's the case. It could be snowing and you could still have a wonderful wedding. The question is, what does your relationship look like? So this, this is the first part. Let's look at that relationship. Because it's during times like this, you get to find out if you can count on the person or do you have to count them out. And I don't know about you, but before I say I do, I want to know. I want to know, can he handle it? I mean, things are shifting now. Finances look completely differently. What is the person willing to show you right now in the midst of the crisis? So you can be cute all day, but when it comes down to the crisis, now we get to see what you're made of. 
Are you going to panic? You're going to cut somebody out? You, you know, you're going to really let your true feelings come shining through. And in most cases, that's what happens. Because when pressure happens, it squeezes you. And whatever's inside is going to come out. When you squeeze an orange, do you get apple juice? No. You receive orange juice. So let that pressure simmer just a little bit. Before you go on, oh, God is mad at me. My mama was right. I should have never married you. You know, we get mad and we start blaming people and all this other stuff. But you got to chill. You need to chill out and really start looking at the very reason why you're getting married in the first place. Is it because you're pregnant? Is it because somebody thought it was the right thing to do? Were you like me? You know, I grew up in a religious environment. And sometimes we take things to the extreme. And so if you don't want to fornicate, then you get married. Well, I did that. It didn't work out for me too well. I was two hours late to my own wedding. I know. I was standing in the shower. It was the most crazy. It was the craziest day ever. I was running errands on my wedding day. And my best friend, Lysandra, was along with me. I was 23 years old, getting, to get, getting ready to get married. I didn't want to be married. I had just graduated college. I had no children, but here I was. I didn't have the courage to call it off. Now, I wish there would have been a hurricane, <laughs> you know, like, God, please split the sky and tell me not to do this. And I stood in the shower and told my best friend, said, Didi, you got to go. And it was light camera action. And for seven years, I turned my life upside down because I was waiting for an act of God. So this is a good experience for you. It's all in how you choose to look at this situation. What are you really made of? How are y'all going to talk to each other with this, with this pandemic? You're going get to get, to get, get with each other and find out what really matters most? Is, are, is it the things that brought you together? Or is it the character is the reason why you're together? And see, the coronavirus or any type of sickness for that matter is going to try you. But when it's a massive experience and everybody's going through it, one thing to understand is not personal because everybody's going through this. You have 6.5% of couples who have already canceled their weddings, 6.5%. You have 28% who has decided to move the date. This is your decision. You also have 22.5% who have postponed their weddings until 2021. Now check this out. 43% of the grooms and, and brides-to-be said, we don't even know what we want to do. Well, be honest. Don't let anybody pressure you. Now, yes, you spent the money on the invitations. I mean, I received a wedding invitation recently, and I think they have been planning this wedding for two years, and I was so happy for her. I'm so happy for her, and in fact, they created a magnet, so they, they took their invitation and made it a magnet, and you can stick it on your refrigerator, and I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. Well, they're supposed to get married this year, and she had been planning this for like two years, and I just want to, I'm going to call her personally, and just, don't listen, honey, listen. It's going to be okay. Now, you could continue with the wedding and just down, you know, cut some people off the list. Because, you know, sometimes we invite people that we really don't want to come to the wedding anyway. So you could use that as an excuse. Sometimes you don't have courage enough to say, I don't want you to come. Just say, hey, baby, you know, with this coronavirus, we can only have 20 people at the wedding. And leave it at that. So you get to decide to figure this out. But what are you made of? Are you going to be held on wheels because this whole situation and it's your fault, honey, is nobody's fault? Well, if you had saved more money, when this thing could have happened, we could have done this and we could have done that. This is not the time for the blame game. This is the time for you to sit your happy hips down and have an intelligent conversation and ask yourself, what is the very best thing? Not just for me, but for us. Now, having been a bride, I remember it was all about me. Now I'm in a different space now. It is a time to highlight the bride because we want to see how beautiful you are. But baby, even if you postpone the wedding or you cancel it, it doesn't take away your beauty. You're going to cry. I understand. 
because of the hype. This is the hype of everything. And if you've centered your world around that, and now it's not going to happen, what does that say about me? It just means, honey, you got to move the date. That's all. Just move the date. Or just change your mind. This might be your out. I'm telling you. Because right now, honey, with this coronavirus in relationships, I tell some, I don't take care of grown men. Ever, 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 ever. And this is the time to see what that man is really about. Can I count on you? Or do I need to count you out? Anybody will, will go with you when things are flowing right, but who's going to hang with me in the valley? Who's going to rally with me in the valley? Because that at the, at the end of the day, that's what it's really about. You take all the makeup off, you take all this away, and what you have, do you have a relationship or a situationship? It's complicated, baby. It's not complicated. Either y'all going to be in this relationship, he loves you, you love him, you're going to respect that person, you're compatible, we're not compatible. That's it. But you always got to know it's not complicated. It just means you're not ready. And for some of the brides, let's be honest. Y'all like, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I didn't know how to tell them I wasn't ready. And guys, there's some of you who are like, whoa, man, that was a close one. And if you start having second thoughts about it, it's okay. Now you can take the time to really say, is this the best thing for both of us? Because when you start, when you come into a relationship like that, you need to ask yourself, what kind of person am I becoming as a result of being in this relationship? And if you're becoming bitter and, and you know, Bridezilla, they have those shows out there, bitter and, and you got an attitude and, and nothing the guy can do is going to make you happy and bigger the ring, bigger. No, baby, let me tell y'all something. I'm Dolores Jones, firstly, the comeback coach. I remember the first time I got married. So I have two husbands. They was my husband. I got married at 23. I had no business getting married at 23, but I love Jesus. And I didn't want to fornicate. Now, I could have said, I'm not going to have sex. But I thought the answer was not to fornicate. And I literally thought God was not going to bless my marriage if I had premarital sex. Can we be honest? Okay. So we have all these hangups. And so when things didn't work out and there were reasons why I should have not married the person, it had nothing to do with the disease or, or pandemic. It had the fact to do with the person cheated. But because I was so caught up in, in this mindset, supposed to be spiritual, but it was stupid. You know, I'm OK. I'm, 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 God said, I got to forgive 70 times seven. No, dude, mm -mm. you done cheated. I holler. I holler. But I didn't have the courage to do that. So now you have some time to think about that. But I listen, I'm just going to tell you the truth. Brides. I got engaged while I was in college at the University of Missouri School of Journalism. He gave me the ring. He proposed. I was stunned because, first of all, it was not a ring that we even talked about. I OK, you can call me. You can call me materialistic all you want to. But I would like a diamond that I can actually see. OK. All right. So I accepted the ring because I didn't want to say no. So I go back to college. I took the ring off and put it on the dresser and went on about my business to school. I was in Columbia. He was in Kansas. When he would come to visit, I put the ring back on. OK, I knew I didn't want the ring. So finally, I said, hey, can we pick a different ring? And he's like, what? So we go to the jewelry store. We pick out another ring. Cool. I'm looking at the ring. I really, really isn't. The ring is the problem. The problem is me. I'm indecisive. Because if you love someone, a ring is not going to stop you. But I thought if he just buys me a bigger ring, you know, a more expensive ring, maybe six or seven carats. No, nah, honey. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no, no. And no. So I came back home and I, I was talking uh, to my grandmother and, you know, the old school people ain't going to let nobody get over on you. So she takes me to a jewelry store and she said, see, that is a ring because for some reason we feel and this is your personal thing. We feel as if the size of the ring or the rock is an indicator of how important the person sees me as. 
True? Okay. Just something to think about. Is it really a preference or do you put your value based upon a big old ring? Now, listen, y'all, listen. I like the big rings, okay? I understand. But at the end of the day, you got to get some things cause you to really look at what is what. So I went back to my fiance and I asked him for a third ring. He got me three rings, y'all. Three. And all of the three rings, I went back and took them off and went on to the college campus. And then when it came time for graduation, I panicked because now I had to make a decision. Was I really going to go through with this wedding? That I really, I'm 23. I have no business even thinking about marriage. He's 32. But he loved Jesus. I love Jesus, right? No, you have some say in the matter. One of the reasons I was going to marry him too, can I be honest? Some of us get with people because we're struggling. I was homeless when I met him. He gave me $40. Now, don't judge me. $40 was a lot of money when you didn't have any. $40 coming from a man when your father didn't do that. That's huge. That's like significant. And I felt like, wow, well, he valued me that much. But it doesn't matter how much money the person gives you, how they begin to treat you, how do they start talking to you? And so in spite of all of that, I use religion to cover up foolishness. Sometimes you think it's God, but it's really gas. Stop lying on Jesus. Stop lying on God. I think God said, no, baby, that's gas. It's gas all day. And if you don't take the time to stand up and say, this is not working for me, you're going to pay for it. And I did seven years, honey. I was going for 10, Pam, because they said I could get Social Security benefits. But when we start fighting, well, let me take that back. When it became, when he put his hands on me the first time and I was in the kitchen washing the dishes. And he grabbed me by my throat and lift me, lifted me off the ground. Baby, I love Jesus, but I went for a knife. Do you hear me talking to you? Can I talk to real people? Okay. I said, ninja, y'all know the word. I said, I will stab you. But the reason I am not going to stab you is because I don't want to explain to our son how you got cut up. So see, that was the way, that's it. So I said to myself, Dolores Jones, you won't have to forget the social security benefits, baby. You have a destiny calling you. So don't let this distraction rob you of your destiny. You're aspiring to be like Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey did not go to the penitentiary. And if you stay in this marriage where it's already gotten physical, you know what's going to happen, right? And so for me, it was, it was violence. Maybe for you, it's the coronavirus. Think about it. This is just something to think about. Don't get mad at me. Don't shoot the messenger. This is, this is a time for you to start thinking. This is a time for you to start thinking. This is a time for you to start thinking. I had a child, fine. But when I left, guess what? I left with myself and my baby. And I had to start over. But it was one of the best things that could have happened to me. Because all of the stuff was gone. It was me, God, and my baby. And I had to decide, Dolores, what are you going to do? Are you going to stand on your face? Or are you going to get back in another relationship and act a fool? And I decided I'm going to stand in my faith and I'm going to raise my son, who was four years old. And it got tough. I was still in graduate school. I had to get on food stamps. Okay? Because when you got to do it, you got to do it. I got in the first time home buyers class. Bought my first house. I was making $28,000 a year. Bought my first convertible. I surprised myself. Okay? I surprised myself. I was proud of that. But then I was scared. Because, you know, some of us will talk about our problems all day long. But when God is blessing us, we don't want anybody to get jealous. And so I took the car and hid the car in the garage at the house God gave me. Because... I thought they were going to think I was doing too much. And I went to a friend of mine and I was like, hey, do you think I'm doing too much? Do you think I should take the car back? He's like, why would you do that? Well, because, see, because some of us aren't, aren't, aren't used to making it on our own. Some people have what they call learned helplessness. 
But things like this, like a crisis, a pandemic, something that happens just all of a sudden, now you got to deal with it. You got to really look to see what are you made of? What are you made of? If, if it's your faith, honey, you need to walk it out. I said, walk it out. You need to walk it out. If not, then go head on and keep putting Band-Aids on things. Because can I be honest with y'all? Some people are in these relationships because it was convenient. Now you get to decide if he can't pay them bills, are you still going to let him be your boo? Well, Dolores, you don't understand. Yes, I do. I understand. I'm a woman. I'm a single mother. And I understand. Now, it's still your decision. Should you cancel your wedding? It's your decision. Now, if you want to holler at me and inbox me, you can do that. In fact, please go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Dolores Jones TV. And then hit the notification button. I'm saying hello to both of you all. I have my, my Facebook viewers. I love y'all. And my new viewers here on, on YouTube. And uh, thank you so much. Somebody said, wow, real talk. Somebody said, I had to learn to stand in my power and my blessings. Right. Cancellation. Why would you cancel it? Can you be yourself in this marriage? Because after the wedding, which lasts about, what, nine minutes and 54 seconds, after some people wait, like in my case, two hours, people waited, not all of them, but some of them did, waited two hours till I got there. And it was like light camera action. And it was like, dude, I don't even remember vows, okay? I, I was just like, I do. Went to the honeymoon. Now that's supposed to be that day, y'all. You supposed to be, mm -hmm. go shake a tail feather. Honey, I had this piece of lingerie I got from Fredericks of Hollywood. Y'all know nothing about that. Frederick of Hollywood, it was purple. I could still see it in all of this, uh, what do you call this stuff? Just fluffy. Um, uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about, ladies. Chiffon and all that. I was cute. No, I was fine. All right. So I cut the music on and I started dancing for my husband. Mm -hmm. Now, I was two hours late for this wedding. I was already conflicted. But they said if I dance for him, it's going to change the, the nature of the relationship. So I start dancing for him. And he said, thank you, Jesus. And all I heard was the name Jesus. And I thought, Jesus is here. Because see, religion had some of us messed up. So I started crying and we did not consummate the marriage on our wedding night. This was bigger than just a ring. I had three rings. Come on. You'll thank me later. Now, I wish my best friend back then, Lissandra, would said, Didi, you are two hours late to your own wedding. You are not going. But she didn't do that. She just let me just keep on walking. But what I am standing here to tell you is that you get to make a choice. But whatever choice you make, there is a consequence, right? There's a consequence for the choice you're about to make. Now, sidebar, I have a book called Stop the Dumb Stuff. Can you see that? All right, Facebook, I think you've already seen that before. Dumb stands for destructive, unsettling, miserable behavior. Yes. Stop the dumb stuff. The book, ladies and gentlemen, I have men who like the book. It's not a very long book because when you're hurting and, and you need to make a decision, you don't need an encyclopedia. You need somebody to get down to the get down and tell you what's going to happen. Now, notice I told you that I have a husband. He was my husband. Well, I didn't learn my lesson. Hello? So I got married a second time. Now, here's the thing. Let me tell you this. Everybody wants to be loved. But if you don't know what that looks like, then you're going to still shoot crap, shoot crap. But eventually, you're going to realize what love is not. And then certain spiritual principles, love is kind. It's this. It's that. Very specific. And if you start overriding it, now you got a problem. So maybe, just maybe, the coronavirus, the pandemic, Caused you to pause before you really made a huge mistake. Now, I'm not saying it's a mistake. You just don't want me to be happy, baby. I want you to be happy. And I want you to be alive as well. So the second time I got married, I waited. I think it was 15 years later or so. So I was grown. 
By this time, I had my own house, my son. I was doing great. I was living on my own. I didn't need anybody to take care of me. God was opening doors and showing me how powerful I am in my own right. And then I met this fine chocolate man, honey. Y'all, y'all know the rest of the story. Chocolates, okay? Ball headed. Smelled good, just all in my nostrils. Honey, it was a mess. I found out he lied to me. I was like, what? But I had a cover-up spirit. Y'all know what a cover-up spirit is? That's where you know it's wrong, but you do everything within your power to make it look like it's right. Okay. you Because I was like, uh-uh, you got to get this together. You got to fix this because you don't have my family. You went to the family reunion. Oh, no, we're going to be together. When everything else is saying, don't do it, don't do it. And I went ahead with it anyway. I did everything I was supposed to do. I brought him around my friends. I brought him around my colleagues. And they said, no. And I was like, what? 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 Well, come on. It's no, Dolores. And I was hard-headed. I even had a couple at the church. I was passing out my, my invitations. And one couple, so you got to stand for what's right. One couple said to me, I'm not taking that invitation. I said, stop playing. He and his wife said, they said, we can't come and witness that because that is not of God. I was like, what? So they didn't come. And then I challenged one of my elders. I had him over with the family. And next thing you know, uh, I'm happy. My, my, I call her my aunt Nancy, but she's my great cousin. She pulls me over. She's like, Dee Dee, you like him, don't you? I was like, yeah. She said, he's not your husband. I was like, what? Now, by this time, I'm so full of myself. I'm trying to just not even pay attention to what my elder sees. And see, for some of us, we so grown, can't nobody tell you nothing. Hello? Okay, can't nobody tell you nothing. You better go sit your happy hips down. And so I married him anyway. Now, let me tell you all this, because I don't, you know, I got men watching me too. I don't ever want to paint a picture where it looks like everybody's the villain. Because at the end of the day, I still had a decision I had to make, like some of you. Should I still get married? What is the coronavirus or pandemic causing me to stop and look at in this relationship? And so because he had already hurt me and I had that cover up spirit, ladies, Keisha, I decided I was going to get me a crutch. You know, the crutch, he was about 6'2" muscles and everything. Mm -hmm. That was my crutch. So when this one over here started acting crazy, at least I'm going to go over there with that one. Okay. The week of my wedding to the person I was told not to marry, I spent a wonderful romantic sexual evening with my crutch, my lover. Okay. Yeah. The guy I was getting married, he didn't know that. I knew it. My lover knew it. God knew it. But I was justifying in my mind that as long as I have somebody on the side, if he starts tripping, then I'm out of here. Y'all know that's some kind of crazy, don't you? Mm -hmm. It's some kind of crazy. But I did it anyway. And so really, on some levels, I can't blame either one of my husbands because I made that decision. And because I finally owned it, I found, found a way to liberate myself. The book is called Stop the Dumb Stuff. Now, would it be dumb for you to continue with a marriage or a wedding that you already know wasn't working in the first place? You mad as hell. You stressed out. Your hair is falling out. Nobody likes the person because they see that the person treats you like dirt. Now, women, we can be a mess too. Men, she's pretty like a Coke bottle, but she's crazy as hell. You got to stop. Press pause. Maybe the pandemic is saying press pause. Let me just read something to y'all. I and mean, then we're going to end this conversation. It's 29 minutes in. We'll be done in about 35 minutes. Is that all right with you? Dolores Jones is my name. I'm the Comeback Coach. You can follow me on Facebook. That's Dolores May Jones or Dolores Jones, the Comeback Coach. Also here on my wonderful, wonderful YouTube channel. Hello, everyone. Feel free to go ahead and subscribe right now. Right now, hit the subscribe button, Dolores Jones TV, and then hit the notification button. So when I'm, in, I'm live, you won't miss a thing, honey. You won't miss a thing. All right. For those of you who may want to send me an email 
or get a copy of my book, Stop the Dumb Stuff, go to DoloresJones.com. Take you there. Hit me up. I got your book. I'll send it to you and we can have conversation. So here is the first. This is just the intro of this book, because this is some real stuff, y'all. This is what movies are made of. This chapter is called Crazy in Love, because y'all know sometimes we really crazy. Maya Angelou once said, love is many things. One thing it is not and can never be is unsure. I didn't want it to get out. I, I was too embarrassed, too educated, and too intelligent to allow this to happen. I really, I really wanted to dance around the issue. I didn't want others to see him differently. Or did I? Was I really protecting him? No. I told myself, you are not judging him for what happened. And this is the Christian thing to do, right? Everything was in black and white. His email read, quote, my hitting you had nothing to do with you hitting me in a great sense. It was the frustration of having to prove myself and my love and commitment to you every step of the way. It was the frustration of not hearing I love you and, or I miss you or I appreciate you and all of the sacrifices that I make to make you happy. The frustration of feeling disrespected and unloved by the person who vowed to love me and cater to me. In his own words, he described what had been in his heart for some time that led to the big blow. What he described as a hit, the police officers that took the report and the people who lifted me into the ambulance, they called it domestic assault. The impact of his fist punching me in my mouth had cut the lower lip, severed parts of my top gum, and dislocated my left front tooth. Prior to this, I had perfectly straight white teeth. My smile was radiant and my lips were full and beautiful. When the police and, and hospital nurses, they came around, they started questioning me and they said, um, what happened? I mumbled, my husband punched me in my mouth. I couldn't believe, I could not believe that I had just put two words, punched in the husband, in the same sentence. As I laid there on the hospital bed, I kept thinking about the fact that only a year ago, only a year ago, I had left him. It was clear to me, based upon behavioral patterns and incidents that I knew so well, that this relationship, okay, marriage was not healthy and potentially violent. Wasn't I the one who spent time counseling other women about the power and control will that helps you see the abusive patterns of behavior? I had served on the board of directors for a battered women's shelter. I'd even interviewed experts and victims about domestic violence and even talked about it on my radio show. I had earned a master's degree in social work and focused on my attention on women's issues. And yet I'm in an ambulance bleeding. Now check this out. 18 days earlier, I had just returned from Chicago for a taping of the Oprah Winfrey show. Okay. So about 14 days, 18 days earlier. I can't make that up. I can't make that up. I can't make that up. Should you cancel the wedding? You know the answer to that. Now, I have some people in the live chat, and they came on here to chat uh, for the replay, which sounds really great. Uh, Dolores came in so late, I'll, I'll have to replay from the beginning. That's fine. Thank you, Barbara. Um, Yes. Come on, somebody. Should you? Why would you? 
Now, that's part of my story. And I'm here to talk about it. So when someone asks the question, should I cancel my wedding? This is deeper than the pandemic and the coronavirus. This is now the time to have that conversation. What is really important? I love you, but do I like you? Do I like you enough to live with you? Do I like you enough to wipe your butt? But see, that's not the fluffy, flirty, you know, foo-foo stuff when it comes to weddings. Uh -uh, no, you know, we just give me my roses and give me my lilies and let me walk down and feel beautiful. And honey, you're going to feel beautiful. But if somebody punched you in your mouth, there ain't nothing cute about that, honey. I can still see the dentist putting long needles in my mouth, in my gum to numb the pain. I had to sleep in a toothbrush. I had, they had to create a brace for me to sleep in. But guess what, y'all? That wedding was pretty. Mm -hmm. I had my uncle, my two uncles, my biological father, my father who raised me, and my pastor. They all gave me away. I had five people walk me down to the altar. And they said, who gives this woman to, you know, to this man? And they said, we do. And I was feeling so pretty and it was great. I felt beautiful. I had a white dress. Oh, I was fine. We had a great time. The honeymoon was popping. The lovemaking was exciting. But the truth was I was living a damn lie. So let's talk about lies at the altar. We're going to talk about that one day. I want you to just face the truth. Should I get married? If you're telling the truth about everything and it works for you, but if not, no. You know you were all that and a bag of chips without somebody on your arm, right? You, you do know that, right? Because times like this will tell you who you can count on and who you have to count out. I'm betting on you. I'm betting that you're going to make the best decision right now. And, and there's a scripture that says, in all things give thanks, for this is the perfect will of God concerning you. Right now, God, I thank you for the pause. Because I could say I do, and I could shift my life with one I do. When I already know what's going on in this relationship. I wish there had been a tsunami the day I got married. You know, now I know better. That's why I'm doing better. That's why I wrote the book. Stop the dumb stuff. Dumb stands for destructive, unsettling, miserable behavior. Jesus, if you could just have him stop. Do no, Jesus ain't going to do it, honey. You going to do it. You going to do it. You going to learn today. You're going to do it. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. But he wants you to do it. If you need to cancel, cancel. Get your money back and get your life right. How could I go to the Oprah Winfrey show? I'm featured on her show because they're looking at uh, people who came from poverty to prosperity. And, and I'm living a double life. It didn't add up. I knew how to package it up. I knew how to put the Maybelline on it. But let me tell y'all something, ladies. God's mercy, Maybelline ain't got nothing on God's mercy. So when you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. Come through Maya Angelou, okay? If you want more information about my book, go to DeloresJones.com. That's my website. Thank you for spending about 40 minutes of your time today with me. If you know that there's somebody and I'm sure we all do, that could benefit from this candid conversation about should I get married, then share it with them. But if it's not for them and it's for you, I hope that you embrace it and understand that you're no less than a woman if you say no. You're no less than a man if you change your mind. You can change your mind. Sometimes you have to change your address. I hope you change your draws, okay? And I hope you come back and spend some more time with me. Dolores Jones is my name. I'm your comeback coach. I simply coach you to bounce back better, not bitter. Do life experiences and bad decisions. Should I get married? You tell me. You can email me as well. Dolores inspires me at yahoo.com.
But when you get the answer, be ready to stick with it because whatever you decide, there is still a consequence. Ask yourself if it is the consequence that you're willing to accept. If not, do something different. Do something different. Do something different. Do something wonderful. Do something different. Do something wonderful. Okay? Do something different. Do something wonderful for yourself. You deserve it. You do know you deserve it, right? You do, you do know you deserve it. All right, then. I'll see you later.